Om. Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang here in Mantisaja today. Lovely to see to see you all. It's good. And welcome also those who are joining us via broadcasting for today's um, satsang. So, one satsang field, we can say. So, big welcome for everyone. And uh, good. Can you hear at the back? You're okay? Ah, <coughs> okay. What are we going to talk about today? <laughs> You can come. <coughs> it's very warm, isn't it, or something? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> I think I ever really said thank you. Sorry, what you said? I don't think I ever really said thank you. Oh, okay. To you. Thank you. And I don't know if I can. It's. Uh, I don't know how I can say thank you enough. I thought you just did. What's <laughs> <laughs> happened? <laughs> what are you thanking for? For peace inside. And happiness. Mm -hmm. And all this love. And thank you for Sahaja for making for making a a place that feels like home. It really feels like home. Oh, when I came here the first time some years ago, it was just like I realized that I never felt at home before. And and to find a place like that it just uh, it just proved something inside that I I knew that I knew it had to be like that. And that it's true. Yes. Actually, Sahaja means natural state. Literally, in uh, Sanskrit, Sahaja means natural state. And natural state means a state that is natural for everyone, actually. Mm. And this naturalness points to something also inside. You use the word happiness and peace, and joy, and this type of thing. These are huge. I would say everyone is searching in their own way for happiness. And the happiness, I hope, that is stable, not just a fleeting feeling of happiness. We all know the momentary taste of happiness, even of peace and joy, they come and go. Like Almost everything else in life is coming and going. Is that it? That everything is just coming and going? It has to be that there must be something that is not coming and going. If happiness is true, there must be a happiness that doesn't just come and go. It must be a happiness that is inherent to your being, meaning it's natural, natural state. One's natural state is happiness, joy, peace. Hmm? That's why we are here, I take it. Hmm? Not to have a sample of it. Sample we have had, everybody has had. Even people with a bad intention has moments of happiness, moments of peace, joy and all of this. But is there such a thing as Unbroken peace and happiness. By unbroken, I would mean that uh, a peace that is so deep, so broad, that 
there is space within it, even for uh, sadness or other expressions can happen in it, but don't remove it. It remains here always. Possible? Yes. Mm. It's a little question because uh, I've come here for many years and then I have to go back. Mm-hmm. Um, and you always say that you should be like a sponge and just let it come in. And I feel like I, I am like a sponge. And when I come here, it, it seems so easy, then everything just becomes very warm and bright just by being here. I also feel that every time I go back, after a while, it's like I'm also a sponge there, and so I absorb noisy yes. <laughs> Let's things. take that, if that was true, that uh, we all have this chameleon quality. So wherever we go, it's as though we take on the background of that place. Hmm? Suppose that was so. So that when you are in some place, a lot of excitement, you get excited. When you go to a place, if there is sadness, you also feel sad. Another place you go adventurous, you feel adventurous. Another place you go very devotional, you feel devotional. If it were like that, suppose it were like this also. And I don't feel I've met anybody who is so content in, in that state. It's a common state for many people, most probably. Hmm. But what I'm pointing to is that however often the, cha- the states change or they come and go, there is an awareness of them, of their movement. Can I say like this? Whether you are new to satsang or not, I am pointing to something that is it bypasses whether you are new or not. Hmm? Everything that we, uh, we see on this side of the eyes, uh, is changeful, comes and goes, isn't it? Hmm. Isn't there awareness of all these changes? We experience them, they happen for a short time, good or bad, bitter or sweet, they come and go. This unending flow, this traffic of sensations, feelings, thoughts, emotions, coming and going, isn't it? Are they not all perceived, observed by something or some space that itself is not coming and going? Would that be true in saying that? Yeah. So if we can start there, then already from the very first um, person standing up, we might be getting somewhere. Because we are not going to keep talking about what you are seeing, because the movie of what you are seeing is constantly playing, it is coming and going. We only have a break because of sleep. seems like as soon as the waking state comes, something is in gear, and the functioning of perception and experiencing is just an ongoing uh, movement. Okay? Even there, there is uh, a knowing of that, there is a witnessing of all these things that come and go. Hmm? They come and go. That which is observing their comings and goings of emotions and thoughts, memories, feelings, all of that, all that is perceivable, that which is perceiving them, my question to you, is that coming and going also? If everything is coming and going, isn't it worth to take a little look towards that which observes them, which itself is not coming and going? So let's stop talking about the things that are coming and going for a moment, and let's look at the, the space. Hmm? that perceives them, but we have just said, it itself is not coming and going. Can it itself be perceived? Is that too difficult a question? A little feedback would help, no? Is that too difficult a question, unreasonable a question? 
if everything that you are seeing, you know, memories, we speak about memories. Why? Because it's gone, it's past. Yeah? And future, we, nobody knows anything about future. We, we hope. We don't really know. Even someone like a Nostra, Nostradamus, his name, one who said they know the future, he doesn't know all the future, gets some sense of some kind of thing. But he doesn't know how he's going to feel in the morning when he gets up. You probably know, yes, in 15 years, this is going to. Tomorrow morning, what you're going to feel like in the morning? You don't know. So now nobody knows the future in that way. And even the past that we feel, okay, you cannot change the past. Actually, the past is a very, very subjective experience also. Because the past sometimes is remembered with a lot of sentiment and so forth. Perhaps not even as it really was. We, we keep changing it. I know with myself, I keep changing it also. Uh, yes, I did this, oh yeah, and this thing, and so on. So nothing is so reliable in this. But that which perceives them, past or future, even present, I'm asking a little bit about that. If we stop talking about the things that we perceive to come and go, and just look now at that space in which they are perceived, that awareness itself, what is this like? Can there be an awareness, even though there is nothing particularly to perceive? You see? Or is there only awareness or consciousness when there is something to look at? Can there be just that by itself? Like it is not carrying anything, it is not holding anything, just this by itself. Hmm? How far away from you is that? Quiet in the house. You. Okay. How far away from you is that? That ability or that dimension in which things are seen. Everything, not just special things, anything, even a fly, a mosquito, anything is seen in that, is perceived in that. But that itself is what? Has anyone considered it? It must be I because it's it's I that see. Hmm? It must be I because it's I that see it. Hmm. It must be yourself. What is it like if you don't tell the story? of the senses, the projections, the memories, if we were only to be aware of awareness itself. Now you can do. Is life only about the things that come and go? No. What is it like, just the awareness, the space in which the, the theatre of consciousness is playing out. What is this like? Just the awareness itself. You can try now and see. Someone here has a piece. Is here. Hmm? Space. Peace. Silence. And something else? Energy. Huh? Energy. Energy. Alive. 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 Being to one's own work. Uh, what? Being, being as, as if you are asleep to your own world. Okay. So there is perception, but there is an underlying. So he's saying that there is perception, there is perception happening there. But not focusing on the object of perception, what about the subject of perception? Hmm? What is actually here, in this place? Is it a person? Oh, I'm surprised. Very good. It's not a person. A person is also a functioning, it's also something perceived. Also. 
For many, it has been what we are. We are a person. But although a person is actually a form of consciousness, it is a very, very limiting state. I am not asking no about the person, but that in which the person itself is seen. You see. Is it worth our attention yes. to look at that? Because we can keep talking and sending emails and postcards about the things that we keep seeing. But what can you say about the thing which you really cannot really see, not directly? We are aware of it, but you cannot see it because is it an object? No. no. Are you an object? Slow down. Uh, are you an object? Sometimes in satsang I'm asking, are you an object in front of the lens of perception? Hmm? Or behind the lens of perception? Or both? Hmm? Behind. So anything that you can see then, if you are behind the lens of perception, then everything that is in front of the lens of perception are only appearances. They come and go. They are belonging to the traffic that comes and goes. Where can we put the person in all of this? It is okay we talk like this or not? Yes. Oh, good. Where is the person? Before, in front of, or behind the lens of perception? In front. In front of. In front of. Okay. Watched by what? The truth. Don't throw words at me. You know, if you're going to answer, stand with your words. Huh? Okay. 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 You must be the answer. Don't give me an answer. Only an answer is only like okay, another word, another concept, soon to be also gone. If it is only in your mouth, if it is only in words, that too is also soon gone. I'm rather asking that you pay attention. You see, that even as the thoughts arise in you, as the words appear. On your lips, they are also seen by that which does not speak. Would I be right in saying this? Is it? Yes. yes. So here you must feel and verify, confirm: Is this so, or are we just imagining this also? Life cannot simply be the things you are looking outside at. It must be how what you are looking at is perceived here. Your experience is something very internal, and often, I would say, a very unique thing. If I were to give one book, Ten books away, ten people, exactly the same book, and I ask you, let's meet in a few days and tell me what you feel about this book. Are you all going to say exactly the same thing? No, but the book is exactly what it is. But our way of perceiving and experiencing it is going to be very unique, shaped by conditioning, perhaps, may even be shaped by whether you are a man or a woman, or how old you are, which part of the world you were born, and all these things may contribute to the unique way that we perceive things. You see? And we will know the difference between what you think and what someone else thinks. There is awareness of that also. I am particularly interested in the awareness itself. Because so little importance is given 
to this. Everybody is complaining how difficult life feels, how, how much uh, they want to find something that is really, truly lasting and beautiful and not able to find. So what about today? We can take a look. That which is perceiving all these things, is it, is it spending a lot of energy? Does it exhaust itself in perceiving things? No. no. When I speak to you, your sense of yourself is that different from this? Is your sense of self in front of this awareness or at the place of the awareness itself? Don't know. I often find it in front, and then I remember, then it sort of comes back. Hmm. So even if you say, I often find it in front, but then I remember, and then it comes back, isn't both the sense of in front and coming back also seen from this place? <laughs> Did it move? Did it reverse? No. So, as I'm saying, if just for a few moments we suspend the story of what we're seeing, and just to be in that place where seeing, even the function of seeing, even the function of perception, is also perceived. Have I gone too far? Okay. So in asking this question, have I given you an unbearable task? Simply to focus on just the awareness itself. Can I give you a difficult one? Who are you who will be focusing on the awareness itself? Please, let's try. Who, if I say, bring the attention to the awareness itself, who receives that instruction exactly? Something in front of the awareness? Anyhow, it works. <laughs> huh? Somehow, in saying, bring the attention only to the awareness now, and not to the sense of the person doing something, having a life, having a story. We know that that story can keep going on. You see, why does that story keep going on also? Yes. Why it goes on? Because also there's interest in it, and the interest in it that's the fuel for that story. It will keep going on. Like we say, if you build a shelf here, you'll find something to put on it. If you have a story or something, develop something, you'll have the interest to keep creating and following it. The interest and identity that we hold on to as what we are, we supply interest to this version of ourself. But now I'm saying, but even that is also perceived. By what is it perceived? You see, and I don't just want a conceptual answer. Allow the question to drop inside a little bit. What is perceiving even the person, the sense of person? I'm asking this question because largely the way that we interact in our daily life is at the basis, on the basis of, or at the level of personhood. Would you agree or not? that we seem to automatically, without any effort, we slip into the costume of personhood. It seems as though we have to do it. It seems as though it's unavoidable. Everybody wakes up into personhood, moves in your day in personhood, go to bed in personhood, but in deep sleep you are nobody. Or something like that. No? So. Are we compelled into personhood, and we have no choice? Or 
is by asking you if the person itself can be seen. That which sees the person, is that a person? No. Cannot be described. Does that mean it doesn't exist? No. Okay. Of what importance is talking like this? Any importance at all? Hmm? Because we speak about everyone here probably have a different story. How they came to be here, where they came from, who they consider themselves. We have all different stories. Speak different languages also. But what if you were told that we all speak the same language? And that language is consciousness. And that French and Italian and German and so on are just translations of consciousness. I'll leave it there for a moment. Let's go back to just this space. Let's be conscious of it, actually. Hmm? In which the senses and their functioning and their in, and the intentions of the mind and identity is playing inside and is being perceived if you are not going to follow the story of the person and their life and projections and so on but just put some attention only on the consciousness or awareness you may call it that is here How long will it be? What are you perceiving as you do this? What are you perceiving if you are not in the story, but simply in the, the ambient, in the place, in that intelligent field in which innumerable sensations come and go? What is your perception? What is your experiencing? The beingness is enjoying itself, you say. No hurry, no hurry, just be with it. Is anyone keeping it up? Does it require your support? Let's keep just looking. And look, but don't create. Don't imagine. And just be. You don't have to suppress the senses. They can also be functioning according to their natural law. You are here. I believe you say you are not merely the person, because the person is also um, something perceivable that seems to come in and out of focus. Right now, are you being personal? Okay, so if anything personal comes, it has a particular vibration about it that is perceived. But we are not going to go with that right now. We are only in the space in which the sensations come and go in that space which I call awareness itself. You are here. How does it feel to be here? Alert, Alert someone say. Neutral. Neutral, someone say. Someone another one says now. Okay. It's natural. Natural. Home. Home. Pure light. Pure light, you say? Yeah. Light, pure light. Yeah. Rest. Okay. 
Are these, are these uh, good things? Yeah. How much effort are you spending right now to perceive these? None. Okay. Why you don't stay here? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a question. I mean, why do we don't stay here, or can't we stay here? Let's slow down a little bit. Why we don't stay here? We say it's peaceful, it's light, it's neutral, home, happy. Why you don't stay here? <laughs> Huh? We what? We edit. We are addicted to experiencing, she said. We are addicted to experiencing. Hmm. Is this also an experience? Yes. Does it change? Right, let me keep asking for a moment. This that we are now just speaking about. Does it, uh, does it come and go? Does it change? Does it grow old? No. Is it natural? Yes. Why you don't enjoy it? <laughs> Why we don't stay? Or do we have to stay? Who are we who come and go from here? Hmm? Conditioning. So conditioning come and go. Would you say or what? Oh, so she says that conditioning makes us somehow go. Okay, us who go is what? Let's slow down. Us who go says conditioning, because my question was why we don't stay here. It seems pretty nice. No? Without doing anything, you are happy, peaceful, neutral, open, soft, kind, light, wonderful. I ask why you don't stay. So you say, well, conditioning compels us to go out. Okay? Whatever goes out, is it not perceived also? From the same place where the happiness is? Okay, so the attention goes out. So even attention, one of our most intimate and powerful tools. Why? Because wherever attention goes and whatever it touches, we are calling that experience. Okay, so even when the attention go, isn't that also perceived? My attention is gone actually. Sometimes people say, no, I can't concentrate. My attention is really running all over the place. Mm-hmm. That means that is also perceived, isn't it? From where? <laughs> isn't it from the same place here? Isn't it good to know this? <laughs> so even the attention goes out, and the attention going out, it is so intimate because we even call this attention I. The attention is going out, running about. You say, I am restless. But the attention is restless. Who is the I? Is the I in the place of the observer, observing these things? Could we place the I in the same place as the awareness itself? Would that be wrong? No. Okay. So the person also say I, and the person goes, and is watched to go. The personal meaning, the personal feelings, the person's ideas, they come and go. They play within, they come and go, and are watched to come and go by this, this, which we also say has no real name. Where are you 
in the light of our talking now. Are you the thing which comes and goes, or that which observes coming and going? <laughs> you don't know. Somebody says, I don't know. Even the feeling, I don't know, is also perceived. Let's again put the attention, if we want to, say like this. Right at the place of the awareness itself. So, whether active or passive, both are perceived. Is it true or not? <laughs> so, even in the most powerful pulsations of the mind, tsunami mind, is it seen or not? Is there a tsunami in the place of the seeing? Mm. Is this really your experience? Yes. All the time? Okay. So sometimes it may take a while, because like some reflex, attention by habit goes to the crime scene, goes to the the, the energy goes to the movement. It's true or not? No? And we have the sense that, oh, I don't know what to do, I'm lost. And, and you forget that that is perceivable. In the instant it is recognized, that sensation with all of its dance and, and is perceived, hmm? do you have to walk back to your original place? No. What happened? The fact that it is perceived means you are in your original place. Is it good to know this or not? Yes. Ah, good. <laughs> Can you come and tell me that when the tsunami is going on? <laughs> well, it, will you listen? <laughs> but it's like it's so easy that I don't believe it. It's like I need you to tell me. Yes, maybe for a time, maybe for a time, because we are not accustomed. The habit is just to go. Wherever some noise, when the mind goes, we go, ah, okay, sorry, got to go. And we're gone. Sometimes we don't even say, excuse me, we're just gone, okay? Isn't it? Yeah? And you don't notice that you notice. <laughs> you see, isn't it? So this is, I feel, important uh, looking, isn't it? Yeah. No? So you say, yes, I need you to tell me that when the tsunami is going on. But you can begin, even as you are now, because attention is called to this, to pay attention to this, to give some a few moments to looking and confirming, is this true or not? Or are we simply imagining these things? I am merely pointing it out. You see, In this place, where even the functioning of perception is perceived. Who is with me? OK, weak on this side. So again, are we able to say that even the functioning of seeing, that even seeing is seen. Yes. Is it possible to say like this? Yes. Yeah? You see? So something must be able to acknowledge, yes, it's true, that even that is seen. In the place where that is seen, you see, what is happening here? Nothing happens. Is that a disappointing discovery? No. So, in answer to your your question or request, I would say just keep 
confirming even the small things, whatever is coming and going. The habit is that the attention runs out to it, it runs this way, runs this way, reporting about what is going on. But from the real place, nothing is going on. You see? Keeping confirming this over and over again corrects the bad habit of feeling that it is you who go. If you stay with it, if it resonates with you, and you keep looking and confirming, gradually what happens is that you stop hemorrhaging energy to the things which are momentary coming and going. And everything stays right here. Your energy field is not broken. You are simply here. So in the day that the forest of the mind burst into flames, you are not touched. And this is your training, you may say. And a training that becomes more mm, enjoyable. It is enjoyable to feel your expansiveness. It is enjoyable to feel that there is something growing into truthfulness. It is enjoyable to feel and to come to a point where it becomes a natural conviction within yourself that what you are is timeless or eternal. If someone merely teach you this, you perhaps will not grasp it. But if you pay attention to this which is unmoving, rather than the things which are always moving, you will come to that natural conviction. Actually, you will even go beyond conviction. It is not simply by saying, I am not what I see, I am not what I see, I am not. Don't turn it into a mantra necessarily like this. It is actually understanding and confirming, but I cannot be that. It is coming and going. If I was that, then when it went, I would also be gone. But I am here to watch its appearance and disappearance. Who or what can I be? Hmm? Not merely just ideas now. Experience and prove. It's very easy to feel some resistance or laziness here. It is part of the mind's conditioning. You see, we have a lot of energy for foolish things also. But for that which reveals your true nature, uh, like this, huh? which is also perceived. Does it matter? Does it have any power that we are saying? But all these things are perceived. That which sees everything, listen please. That which perceives everything, all your life you have been perceiving, and making some record, pressing save, save, delete, delete, <laughs> save, replay. We've been doing, okay? No one else is really deeply contributing to your movie, okay? That which is perceiving everything, every sensation, even there are some sensations which are so subtle. There are no names for them. Still they are perceived in your consciousness. So that which is perceiving everything, which sees everything, okay, can that itself be perceived? That which sees everything. And by seeing, I don't mean only the visual seeing. Perceiving, as in the feeling, sensing, knowing, being. That which is behind it, can that itself be perceived directly? 
Please look and try. And if it can be perceived, by what can it be perceived? By another? Does it have a story? Does it have parents? Does it have a seeing diploma? <laughs> no. So, what is it if I say that which is perceiving everything? Where is it? Where is the location of that which perceives inside and outside simultaneously? Where is the location? What about you? Where are you in all of this? Are you object of perception or subject of perception? It is mostly true habit why we place ourselves as an, in the position of an object of perception. It is fine, but it is not fine if you are not also the subject of perception. You follow or not? Yes. Yes. If you are only a leaf blown about by the wind, but what knows this leaf being blown by the wind? Another leaf? Somehow, within the, within the blown leaf, must be something which is not blowable, not moving, not subject to the, the movements of the wind. In you, you are asking now, like this, uh, what happens during the tsunami? Tsunami means crisis moment. Crisis moment. Intense experiencing. In those moments, we tend to uh, panic. Hmm? Panic is also perceivable. But maybe in that intensity of emotional <gasps> roller coaster or whatever, no? Uh, our ability to perceive, is it diminished? Necessarily? Why is it then that we feel somehow not now, not now, I've got to I'm all caught up in the in the noise of the mind? We identify the the strength of our identity with the body mind. Hmm? determines the strength of your ability, or corresponds with the strength of your ability to perceive it. They directly relate. If you are strongly identified with your body-mind functioning and personal identity, you will feel unable to witness it and stay out of that noise. Many beings through their practice, you may say, also, but largely through understanding, which is what I am presenting to you. Through understanding, they come to recognise their correct position in this, and they honour it. They begin to honour it. What do I mean by honouring it? They pay attention to that. They are very keen to observe this movement, and to see, whoa, Whoa, I'm I, I'm watching this, and maybe after a while of watching it and not identifying with it, you lose interest in it also. And if you lose interest in a thing, 
it doesn't get registered in consciousness anymore. Which effectively means, experientially, it didn't happen. Now, we can say, we are, um, we are editing maybe the things that we don't like, we try and get rid of them, and the things we do like, we try and keep them. But even if that were true, the one who wishes to keep or to get rid of is also perceivable. Who feels to give some attention to this from now? That is pretty good. Because if indeed you do this, the fruit of your looking, you will never be disappointed with. If you, as you, if you obey your hand, okay, and say, okay, from now I want to get that. This is really interesting. I'd like to sit with it more, and 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 really try to understand what is happening here. Because in the past, I feel I'm very easily distracted. Some people, they even satsang, they say. I'm very easily distracted. Somebody says something, and I'm really right in the middle of that story. Or I'm really here, and someone clink, clink, and and something is gone. Well, for you also, you can do this. You can watch that sense of going, and see that which observes the sense of going, did that go, and find out what happened. And such a joy, such a silence, such a stillness, such a steadiness is discovered, you see, and tremendous confidence come also that you can keep on like this and transcend all this negative, influenceable, influential noise that we entertain. We entertain that. We are very complacent with many bad habits, and they can quickly be overcome, actually. So many wonderful things await you. So many wonderful things await you, meaning that uh, we are not accessing the great part of our potential also. We don't know anything about it. But in starting here, paying attention, learning to observe, and I can tell you that there are now a few people who have been sharing these things in prisons around the world now. And prisoners, many of them, are going, Wow! Wow! I thought I had no control over that. But just the ability to observe, and not to be pulled into the reaction, that even now, actions, reactions, Interactions are observable, and I find, in the midst of all this, I am still. You know what that means? That there are prisoners locked up in jail, maybe much more free than you. A surprise? That people, that the bodily restrictions, even sometimes it even amplifies their inner freedom. Simply keep checking in. We are recording this talk today. It's free for you to listen to. Try and apply that to yourself and look. And you see. But is that true? I mean, it's just something come and go. Even you don't have to spend so much time trying to prove if it's true or not. You can it tells you it's not true. You stay put. Get used to your own stillness. Get familiar with that natural state of emptiness, meaning empty from the noise of life. Be aware of yourself 
in this way. Hmm? And from just being silent, without being silent, you discover silence. You don't make silence. Many wonderful things are waiting to reveal themselves in you. And it keeps expanding. And yet this expands this expandingness is also taking place against the background of unchanging awareness at the same time. A paradox you may only experience. Hmm? I said it's a paradox that the truth of it you must experience it. If you only think about it, ah, it doesn't make sense. That's what many people do. But I'm hoping that you will take it and look, look for yourself, because simply in this. If you've chosen this, of course, you know your bad habits and the mind is going to rebel against what we are sharing. Actually, it is as though something, some power within us, doesn't want to go in the direction of elevating the consciousness, but rather to keep you in the level of personhood. That in six years, you maybe have a beard, you probably. A bit older, more wrinkles, but you've not really grown internally. Maybe our growth is mostly external. But here your real growth is internal, meaning you're discovering your inner life. Inner life means doesn't say that you have to give up outer life. That can go on. You can still have your job. Follow your religion, follow your practice, do whatever. But internally, somehow, something is deepening in a way that nothing external can give you this joy, this peace. And it's not a peace that you will have or collect or keep. It is synonymous with your own being. I'm sorry I used your question, innocent as it is, to launch this big attack on you. <laughs> no, but it's very good, because I think all that you ask is in my response, but also to spread it for everyone that you can see.